the first question, I'm a metalhead and I'm amazed that you work it on the creatures from that beautiful music video from a sleeping the dead from Mastodon. So, so let's go talking about the experience working with this band. It's a huge band, an amazing band. And I'm happy that they are doing now great, great videos and you work it on one of them. So tell us your experience working with Mastodon. My studio did that and I did not work on it at all. So yeah, what we yeah the, well, the studio works on various jobs, and I was not involved with that one. Okay, so I will jump on from the next question. You work it on several movies that I consider like cult classics. One is The Golden Child. Another one is Evolution. So yeah, what are your memories on those movies, and do you think that these movies need? A remake? No, I, you know, I didn't like working on those movies and I didn't like the movies at all. Um, I didn't, you know, but, you know, there are, there are different, you know, tiers to how people come to movies that they like. And if they see movies at this right age, and it could be anywhere, depending upon the subject matter, between seven and 12 or 14, um, Yeah, the viewers tend to latch on those things and they become the movies of those, that generation. And I'm beyond that generation. And I, the, the movies that I experienced working on were with George Lucas and Steven Spielberg and Paul Verhoeven and Ron Howard. And these guys are, you know, very experienced uh, directors. And, um, and, uh, on um, evolution that was Ivan Reitman, but Ivan's not a great director at all. I mean, he's made some movies that were very popular uh, and made a lot of money. Ghostbusters was like, my God. Um, and, uh, but I, I never cared for his filmmaking style and, you know, didn't particularly care for him as a, as a human being. I, th I thought he was very rude to people and insensitive. And then, um, and then what was the other one? The Golden Child. Um, that was another one where, uh, who directed, was that John Cordy? Who directed that? I think so. Yeah. Anyway, he was kind of absent from the project a, a bit. Uh, didn't really know what he wanted to do. So if a you know, director is like uncertain, then they, they can kind of take you down paths that um, waste a lot of time, you know? So, uh, but, you know, we got through that, you know, okay. It wasn't, wasn't as bad as some of them, but, you know, again, I think the movie was very good and, um, and yeah, but I, I thought that our, our work in that was, was pretty good. Same thing with, um, you know, evolution. Uh, the thing was, I was disappointed in that, In that they they uh, had um, I'd asked for like a xenobiologist or somebody that, that studies extraterrestrial forms to come in and uh, so we could come up with some designs that would be different uh, in terms of what the alien species might be that grow on the earth and uh, we came up with some really good different ideas of um, interesting things. But Ivan and DreamWorks didn't want anything interesting. They wanted something that people had seen before. So everything was kind of designed around dinosaurish, Jurassic Parkish kinds of things, which I thought were less than interesting. It's great to know that because now I'm imagining how will be that movie with your ideas. I think it won't be flopping in the in the screen, the screen like that movie did. So, wow, no, thank you, Phil. Phil, es un gusto. Gracias por estar en el canal. Bueno, quisiera preguntarle sobre su experiencia en dos cortometrajes que has dirigido, Prehistory Base y Mutant Land Light. Entonces, coméntame la experiencia, que para mí es uno de los mejores trabajos que has hecho como director. Ok, John is asking about some short films that you did that are Prehistory Beat and Mutant Land Light. So, tell us about working on those short films. Mm, uh, well, Prehistoric Beast... I started thinking about uh, about the time we wrapped up Empire Strikes Back, and as we were getting close uh, to the end, or while I was working on Return of the Jedi, um, I shot like a, a animatic of this dinosaur movie 
that I wanted to make. I mean, I've been interested in dinosaurs since, you know, I saw King Kong in 1956 on television. And so I consider myself like an amateur paleontologist. I, I stay abreast of, um, you know, what's going on in that field. And um, so after Jurassic, I mean, after um, uh, Return of the Jedi, I took a year off and made Prehistoric Beast. Uh, yeah, it took me about a year. And uh, that was uh, something that I wanted to do. Um, you know, I, I tend to like to put things behind me. And I was at this point where I kind of wanted to move beyond dinosaurs. And uh, as you know, it was just something I had to get out of my system. And so uh, the title Prehistoric Beast comes from a scene in the 1933 King Kong when uh, uh, the, the sailors uh, find uh, come across the first creature, which is a Stegosaurus, and they kill that. And as they're walking by it, Jack Dris Driscoll asks Carl Demon, what, what is this thing? And Denham says, it's a dinosaur, Jack, a prehistoric beast. And that's where I got the title from. So I just wanted to make that connection with that movie since it was so seminal in my life. And, you know, in, in, in my, uh, you know, thinking, um, you know, uh, at, at that point in time, I had intended to try and see if I could get it licensed to uh, schools as like, a, you know, uh, inspiration for kids to make something dramatic and interesting uh, that I would like to have seen when I was a kid. And the feedback I got was, well, we can't show it to children because if one child got scared, then we could get sued or whatever. So uh, that, that, you know, blew up. But I was able to, over the years, license it out to various projects because there was not very much dinosaur material out there. So it ultimately, you know, wor worked out well. And of course, ultimately, um, you know, I, I had shown that to George Lucas. And when uh, Steven Spielberg asked, uh, you know, George, as he was getting ready to do Jurassic Park, who might be good for that? And George uh, suggested me because not only did I know dinosaurs, I knew the pre-production, post-production, uh, pre-production, production, and post-production, you know, um, ways of building a movie. And so I was really like an ideal guy. Um, so Prehistoric Beast did not end things for me. It was, you know, kind of a new beginning um, in that regard. And then um, Mutant Land was something uh, that I wanted to do. I actually wanted to make a feature that was based on uh, um, uh, Jan Sternod and Richard Corbin's series, Mutant, Mutant World, Mutant Land. And, uh, and Corbin wasn't interested. And then you know, Sternod, you know, we didn't have the same ideas about what, what that should be. We tried to write a script together with producer John Davison. And so I just decided to take it and make, a, you know, change the title and make a, a short film. Uh, it was in a period where a number of people in my studio were kind of in between jobs. So I came up with a scenario and, you know, the guys at my studio, uh, you know, put it together over, you know, half a year, or like in between jobs or when, when they could. So that, that's how we accomplished that. Now is now it's my turn. Uh, okay. Because, yeah, you mentioned the word, the seminal words with, of course, movies that are now classics, working with George Lucas, working with Robert Holland, working with Steven Spielberg, but summing up with your masterpiece that is Mad God, what do you think of what is, is the creature or the, I don't know, in, in your whole show, your word that you, I don't know, the, the word is mostly feel proud, but when you feel, yeah, so so satisfied that oh, I I love what this director did with my work here, or I love doing this specific part, making Mad God on my project on my projects. What is the one thing that makes you feel wow? This is it. This is the one creation that I feel most proud in a creature in a sequence. 
I don't have any any particular sequence or creature that I, I like the most. One of the things was when I was a kid, um, you know, seeing King Kong, and then in 1958, uh, uh, when um, Ray Harryhausen's and Seven Voyage of Sinbad came on as a child, I had no idea how these works were uh, executed. But one of the things I walked away with was um, that sense of spectacle, you know, that that movies give you. And the sense of coming on to something that you'd never seen before. And over the years, you know, I was very lucky to work in a period of like auteur filmmakers, you know, where there were really smart people that were making uh, inter really interesting films. And then after Starship Troopers, everything kind of uh, that 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 phase kind of evaporated. And there were, you know, the movies that were, you know, um, made after that to me were less than interesting and as things progressed they got less and less and less interesting until you come to this point you know that is in the wake of covid and the strikes in los angeles and streaming and now 99 percent, 95 percent of what's being made is just rehashes of old stuff and just not interesting so that's what i i was motivated to do i come from a art background conceptual art background so it's it's very different than normal cinema i mean i'm a you know um you know like many filmmakers a student of filmmaking and really love love cinema but there are aspects of cinema that i think um have not been challenged or somewhat forgotten like i thought i i believe that silent movies are in many ways far superior to sound movies and dialogue movies because once sound came in everything kind of um kind of uh dis, you know got was distilled in uh the dialogue and exposition and explaining this is what happened this is how this happened and this is how that happened and um then you know a lot of material was taken from books um which they did in the silent era as well but um uh it it created a system in the hollywood system that you know was really fantastic if you look at 1939 it was an amazing year for hollywood cinema um but it was a very narrow bandwidth uh, in in my mind creatively and so that's why i i wanted to do something like uh something different and that's what ultimately developed into mad god phil también hay que destacar de que hiciste una edición en 1990 para un director pues nipón que se llama Shin Sonichimori que se llama el corto animado Aster es una edición que hiciste qué le recuerdas sobre eso wow this is an interesting question because John is asking about an, an edition job that you made from Shin Sonichimori um, not only tell us about working in this Japanese project but it's crazy because I know the history of a, of a movie called John Head that also take take a lot of time like like Mad God and is working with this this animation. So yeah, tell us also uh, what do you like about uh, foreign cinema, like Japanese cinema, Asian cinema, and working with Shin Sonichimori. Most of my cinema education uh, came when I was younger, and by the time I really started intensively working, you know, professionally. I, I had less and less time to, you know, go to movies. And I was very early on. I think when I was like 16 or 17, there was a repertory cinema by where I lived that showed the first, uh, you know, uh, Fellini, Bergman, Kurosawa movies that had ever come to the United States. And I had only been, um, you know, exposed to American cinema. So this was, again, it was like one of these experiences that were eye opening because it was it was new. I'd never seen anything like this. And, it, you know, they operated more, let's say, on a uh, on a philosophical level that American uh, 
um, U.S. movies tended to stay away from. And so I found that very compelling, you know, um, and, uh, you know, primarily, you know, they they were ideas that came from, um, you know, other countries than the U.S. and uh, different different forms of imagination. And and again, this fueled my interest in doing things that were different. But it, it was it was a huge revelation to me at the time. And I even like, you know, when I was about 17, I made what what I called my um, my Bergman movie yeah, in 16 millimeter. <laughs> so I was exper- you know, I, I didn't jump in straight. I was doing stop motion animation at the time. But what I was really interested in was, you know, um, you know, kind of getting behind uh, the, the mindset of uh, making images that were like Bergman. John, qué bella pregunta. Tienes algo más? Sí, eh, tenía la de, bueno, yo sé que pocos se le preguntan sobre esta producción, Willow and Howard the Dog. Eh, ok, John is asking about two productions, of course, from George Lucas. Eh, whatever you want to talk about, he feels with this production, like I felt with the first one that I mentioned, eh, that are Howard the Dog and Willow. Whatever you want to say about working on those pieces, go ahead. Well, again, I didn't think that they were the best movies in the world. You know, they, they were jobs. Um, Ron Howard is a terrific guy, terrific director. You know, so I really, really enjoyed working with him. I didn't particularly care for the movie at all. Um, I was certainly glad to work on it and, you know, and, and get paid. But um, I was never a big fan of that level of kind of fantasy movie. Uh, I, I preferred, you know, more sci-fi horror or oriented stuff. Um, so I was uh, ambivalent. I didn't think much about it. And then Howard the Duck, I thought was just, uh, you know, atrocious, you know, from the beginning and didn't particularly like the producer and the director and had to go to George and, you know, tell him, you know, that I felt that they were, they were running the show off the rails and then George had to get involved. And then that was awful. So yeah, but both, uh, yeah. Howard, the doc in particular was, was really awful for me to work on. And then when it came out too, so. <laughs> but, okay. you know, there, there are, there are people today that hit that, you know, golden spot when they were like the, just the right age where it was just, you know, it's like, you know, one of their favorite, films are very they're very nostalgic about it yeah i feel and i think john got another question with another nostalgic film john continua el también hay que destacar eso sí son mejores que esperaña y, y dragon hair así que qué fue el impacto que tuvo al tener pues obviamente bastante reconocimiento en ello um in fact i remember that this movie got a lot of praise from from the best of course like the the, the previous one Anything you can tell about Dragon Hair and Piranha? Well, I did Piranha right after Star Wars. And um, the producer, John Davison, who I went on to make Robocop and Starship Troopers with, and jo- Joe Dante saw uh, my name and John Berg's name in the credits uh, for the chess scene. And they were both big stop motion fans. And so they hired John and I to you know, work on the piranha fish which were not stop motion that they were more practically oriented you know puppets um and that was that was a lot of fun that was really the first time i had ever i, I worked on a lot of commercials and would go on location there but you just go on location for a day or so uh but you know th- that was uh you know uh, that was a lot of fun for me i really enjoyed the crew um john davison would bring a 16 millimeter projector and every sunday he would run you know one of his the movies in his collection so it was like a great deal of camaraderie and you know um i i really the movie, i didn't think the movie was terrible i you know it was it was enjoyable so we were all very happy with that um dragon heart on the other hand my my involvement on that was um um Rob Cohen was not happy with the design of the dragon that ILM was doing. And what they were doing was, um, you know, what they did on, on Jurassic Park. They knew how to quantify 
making creatures the way they made Jurassic Park. And one of the conditions with Jurassic Park, of course, was at that time we knew that dinosaurs had feathers. But the technology did not exist at that time to effectively put feathers on things. And so they made uh, all of the dinosaurs had were, were the ways that they had characteristically been uh, represented you know, with like smooth surfaces and not a lot of spines and that, that kind of stuff. And that's what the, the uh, ILM designs um, sprang from was that technical um, impediment that they didn't feel that they could, they could cross. What that did was it really limited their design abilities you know, to do something different. So what they did was very uh, benign and, and kind of boring. So that's why Rob hired me to come in and work with some, you know, designers and sculptors to design something that was a lot more complex um, that had like spines and different kinds of scales and, and that kind of stuff that ILM wasn't too happy about, but, you know, too bad, you know, I mean, that's what to push things forward. You have to go in areas that you don't, you're not aware. You don't even know if you can really do. And then you find solutions. You always find solutions somehow. Um, and so I created uh, animatics for a number of the key scenes uh, for that. And that was pretty much the extent of my involvement was the, design of the dinosaur and then the, those animatics and then that that was it for me you know then uh, scott squires was a visual effects supervisor on that and they went off to romania or bulgaria or wherever and shot the movie and that was it for me sí, que, ¿cómo define su trabajo en una palabra y redes sociales? okay phil as a final uh, john always do this question try to define your word and that will be crazy because It's huge in one word. Okay, uh, different. Yeah, and no, send a bit high to to the to whatever you want. The camera is yours. Well, uh, thank you for the interview with John's uh, channel. It was, you know, a pleasure to talk to you guys, and uh, have a great day. The other thing that I told is that John loved also the animation that you made from Coneheads, another crazy movie. No, then sure, you're honestly and feel. A bit, thank you. In fact, I, I put my dinosaur picture just for this interview because I right. suspected cool. that. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Pleasure for you. Okay. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you, guys. See you. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.